Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I got pictures of Kaylee Goncalves. I got pictures of Maddie Mogan. I got pictures of fucking Brian Koberger in my phone. Doesn't mean I killed anybody. Today, we're going to be talking about a story from People Magazine in which Brian Koberger had pictures, I guess, of one of the victims in his phone. A lot of people are saying it's Maddie Mogan, which, hey, maybe it was. I will admit, this is not a good look for Koberger. I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time. We're going to get into this. Also going to touch on the limp wrister that we had a discussion about the other day. We're going to talk about all these things here today. Let's get right into it. Let's go. Now, let's be honest here. Some things are just bad optically. Some things don't look good. Some things look very good. They, they look very good. I'll be honest with that. Uh, Kaylee and Maddie are very, very attractive. Um, and just to piss off the Dylan people, so is Dylan. Just saying. All border women were very beautiful. I, I, yeah, a little bit. I'm not quite the Xana type person. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyways, guys, I'm JB Gunner. This is JB Gunner TV. Uh, we're going to get into this story. But first and foremost, let me say thank you. To everybody that supports the channel. Regardless of the method you choose, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo, PayPal. Truth is, guys, I couldn't do this each and every day as often as I do without you, the Gun Squad. So big shout out to you guys. And if you too enjoy my content, if you find my work valuable, feel free to hit the links down below. Support the channel. I still have not monetized this channel. Uh, it is completely funded by you, the viewer. Uh, that way it lets me know who really desires this content. Um, it enables me to not have to worry about subs or views. And it allows me to come out here and just talk however I want. So if you guys want to support the channel, the links are down below. By the way, down there, there's also the links to my other channels. My politics channel, my live stream channel, things of that nature. But I would advise you, if you're snowflakey, it's probably not the place for you. And we found out over the last couple of days, a lot of people are not just snowflakey, but they're fucking retarded. Let's just call it what it is. Some of you people. Now, let me make something clear real quick. I believe Dylan Mortensen fucked up greatly on November 13th. I believe Dylan Mortensen might even have something to do with some shit. Not 100% sure, but it is a theory that's in my head. Obviously, none of us believe the official narrative. But what I do not believe about Dylan Mortensen is that she's a man. A lot of you guys, really oddly, you call Justin, this Justin thing, a dude, despite her being a chick, you believe what Justin says about themselves and, of course, about Dylan. Dylan never claimed to be anything. She's clearly a woman, but there's still a lot of you that's like, we got to hear this Justin person out. Look, man, if you want to sit and listen to a broad that don't know she's a broad, if you want to listen to a broad that thinks she's a dude and you really want to listen to this thing, even though they lied about Chief Fry, they li they've lied over and over again. If you really want to listen to this thing, unsubscribe and get the fuck out. Because I don't like retarded people and I don't want retarded people watching me. I don't want retarded people talking to me. I don't want retarded people sucking my dick. I don't want retarded people around me. Go get on the short bus. Let's get to the story. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to get in touch on that a little bit either, later because I do got to give a shout out to T TNT and also uh, Harsh Reality because they've came to their senses. They've come out and they've made statements and they pretty much have called the Justin thing a liar. Even though it goes against both of their little liberal agendas, they at least come out and pretty much called the thing a liar. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to this. Accused Idaho killer Brian Koberger allegedly had pictures of the victim on his phone, sources are saying. Let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. The man accused him for, um, you already know who the fuck Koberger is. A phone that belonged to Koberger was collected after his arrest. According to the source, authorities found pictures of the victim on the device. What victim? This is one of the female victims, apparently, that was on his phone. I'm, I'd like to hope so. I hope you didn't have Ethan on that. I'm going to be honest. If you would have had Ethan on that motherfucker, you should go to jail. You should take your monkey ass to jail just for being limp wristed. If you, I'm glad, I'm glad you didn't have Ethan on there, Koberger. At least I can say what's up on that one. Anyway, according to the source, a picture found the picture of the victim. Uh, the picture found a picture. Anyway, the source did not specify whether they were photos that he had taken of her or if they were downloaded from her social media. 
He had more than one picture of her, the source says. It was clear that he was paying attention to her. Very possible. Very, very possible. Madison Mogan. Okay, we all know the names of all these people, so we all know what happened. More than a month later, the authorities arrested Kohlberger. Uh, we already know all this fucking story. We know where he was arrested, all this. There's really nothing here other than the fact... Um, other than the fact that they are now claiming, sources are claiming, whether this be people or we're looking at News Nation, they're now all of a sudden pe- they're all of a sudden claiming that Brian Kohlberger had the pictures on his phone. Now I've said this the other day that I'm not too sure that I understand these anonymous sources or believe them. The amount of trouble you could get into for leaking this information in the middle of a gag order, it seems pointless. Like who would risk jail time? To tell something as simple as what's been being told through News Nation. And don't you think it would be easy to track down which person that's, that's, got, that's close to the case that has a direct connection to News Nation? Don't you think that would be kind of easy? They're not communicating with anybody else for the most part. Well, this one was people. And then News Nation. Like nobody's communicating with Fox News, CNN, nothing else. It's just News Nation and People Magazine. You got to take that into consideration when you listen to some of this fake news. We'll listen to it, though. We'll hear them out. We'll hear what uh, old uh, Ban- Bannerfield here has to say. Let's check it out because it says Brian Koberger had photos. To report to you regarding the Idaho murder case. The uh, four murdered uh, students in we know Idaho, the fuck they are, Brian bitch. Stay up. in jail awaiting the next hearing in June. A gag order making it very difficult to sort of put the pieces together in this very strange mystery. But we are learning something tonight about Brian Koberger and we? his predilections. On his phone, according to People Magazine and News Nation's reporting as well, on Brian Koberger's phone, numerous pictures of one of the victims. I had a chance to talk with Steve Helling, who's investigative reporter with People Magazine. Now, Steve Helling's gotten a little bit of trouble in this case before. His, his reporting within this case hasn't necessarily been top notch. It's all right. But kind of like with Banfield, you understand because there's no real news out. These people are just, you understand the mainstream media is just doing leaks now. And a lot of mainstream media is staying away from it. But just like the YouTubers, everybody's clawing it. See, I'm not reporting anything to you. I'm just providing my commentary on the shit that's out there. I don't know if any of this shit's true. And I don't care if the shit's true. I'm just giving my opinion on the shit. Brian Kohlberger, they're saying, had a photo of one of these two girls, but it's being talked about as it pro- possibly being Maddie Mogan. Maddie, Mogan's, uh, Maddie, so Mogan, I- Maddie Mogan seems to probably be the one. Let me show you what, what this is right here. Here's why Mogan seems to be the one. If you look at the next video, it says Kohlberger liked all of Madison Mogan's Instagram photos. So if you put, if you add two and two together, you're going to get four. The reality of this is probably, and I'm surprised by by this because I I would have thought Kaylee Gonzalez. I told you from the beginning of this entire case that one of the, look at my very first video. What is it? A hundred videos ago on this case. I told you that day on that day, it would be more than likely an incel that was going after Kaylee or Maddie. My money was on Kaylee since she's the hottest of the two. Right now, all these months later, February of 2023, it's exactly what it looks like I said. An incel going after Maddie or Kaylee. Now, whether he's an incel or not, whether it's Kohlberger, we don't know yet. But clearly, the official narrative right now seems to be that the killer went after Maddie Mogan. Your boy's been right the whole time. Let's roll it, though. Let's get back to where we was at. We'll check that one out here in a minute, but let's get back to the photo. About some of the findings regarding that piece of information, the fact that Koberger's phone had loads of pictures of one of the victims. This is our conversation earlier. So, you know, somebody who's very familiar with the investigation says that after they arrested Brian Koberger, they took his phone, which, of course, is what you do. I would never trust a man with a voice like that. You sound too much like the Justin chick. I'm sorry. And I don't care how many tards and, and limp wristers this pisses off. If your voice sounds like that, I can't trust you. You probably don't drink beer either. You probably don't like pussy either. 
And I don't trust any man about anything that doesn't like pussy and beer or sports. You got like, to have all three of those things. I don't care what kind of sports. It could be fake sports. It could be WWE instead of real sports. I'm good with that. But you got to drink beer, scratch your ass, burp once in a while, and watch sports. And if you do not, and you have a little bass in your voice, and if you don't have that, I don't trust you. I don't believe you. I'm just being dead honest. Expect. And now that they've been looking at his phone, you know, they have all of his communications. They have all of the things that you would have on your phone. And one of the things that they looked at were the pictures. And there are pictures of at least one of the victims in his photo roll. Uh, we don't know the details of those pictures. We don't know whether they were pictures he took from a distance. We don't know if they're pictures he downloaded from her social media. What if it wasn't one of the ones that's dead? These people called Dylan a victim, right? What if it's a picture of him with them? I like, granted they could they would have said that probably. But what if it's a picture of Dylan? What if it's a picture of him with Dylan? What if it's a picture of him with Maddie? Because remember, there was rumors of him going to that, that restaurant, the vegan restaurant. Remember, we're going all the way back to that. Is it possible that he knew them from that restaurant? Took photos with them. You know, they knew each other. If it comes out that they knew each other and were positive with each other, because I'm going to show you something else here that, that is very, very important. Hold on, I'm going to show you something very, very important. I'm going to show you this right here. This happened. Case summary. If you take a look at this. They have ordered to file defendant's exhibit A. Attached to defendant's first supplemental request for discovery under seal. Brian Koberger has entered evidence into discovery. What kind of evidence does Brian Koberger have? Evidence A. Evidence from the defense. From Brian Koberger has been entered into discovery. Interesting, right? Interesting. Because you got to ask yourself, what evidence... Because, listen, when you're on the defense, you can only, you're only going to have the most evidence that you're going to really enter is shit that can get you off. Remember what I said? You guys are going to be shocked if Brian Kohlberger has an alibi. Or you're going to be shocked if Brian Kohlberger comes out and says, yeah, I knew these people. Here's how. We did drugs, whatever, but I didn't kill him. I was at the party the night before. Left my knife sheath there. Whatever, I don't know. I'm not saying anything of that is the case. I'm saying you don't fucking know. How do you know? But he had pictures of one of the female victims on his phone. And is anyone uh, pointing to which one of the three female victims might be the one who's um, on his phone? I mean, we all have our suspicions, and of course the cops certainly know, but that's not something that they're telling. You know, there's a gag order in place. They can't tell us all these details. Oh, but they can tell you that. So let us sink in what this man just said. There's a gag order. Cops can't tell us who was the victim, but they can tell us who. Do you see what I'm saying? You got to keep your mind open to shit like this. It's fun to listen to. It's fun to commentate on. It's fun to analyze, but you can't, you can't take it that seriously because you have to ask yourself, what cop in your right mind would take the risk, risk his job to tell us little details like this, but then won't go all out and say, look, man, Maddie was the target. Kaylee was the target. They won't tell us that detail. Why would they risk their job at all to tell us some bullshit like that? But yes, uh, it was one of the uh, one of the three female victims, and mm. cops are, sure know who they are. You and I could guess all day, and we'd probably guess correctly, but we don't have that officially. And of course, it, without even being able to name them, it's hard to, to push further to suggest, is that person potentially the target of all of this? Like, was there one person who was the target? And maybe the other three ended up as, as collateral. Are they saying anything about that? 
Well, before the second gag order came along, you know, we were getting, you know, you were getting it, I was getting it, we were getting these tips. And, you know, I think that they had a pretty good idea, even back then, a month ago, of who the primary target was. Whether or not these pictures are of that person, who you and I both pretty much know, is, is remains to be seen. So what else did they get or are you able to find out about um, from, you know, combing his photo rolls? Is there any other clue in there? No, but it certainly seems as though he was, um, you know, he was very aware of what was going on in this house. We know that. I, I want yeah. you to think about how stupid this sounds. You mean to tell me that Brian Kohlberger made all them mistakes and had pictures of the fucking bitches on his phone? Come on, man. I'm not believing anybody's this dumb other than that Justin lady. I'm not believing anybody's this dumb. I'm not buying it, man. That would make him the dumbest motherfucker to ever live. I don't even keep pictures of ex-bitches or... Listen, man. I don't even keep pictures of ex-girlfriends on my phone. I don't keep pictures of... Or on social media or, or on anything. When I stop talking to women, I even delete the fucking text. That way, just in case I get with somebody, they're not like, hey, let me look at this old shit. I see, JB, you, you've offered your dick to everybody in, 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 in the country. And some UK motherfuckers. That's true. But I listen, I delete everything all the time. So I, I refuse to believe this motherfucker killed somebody and then kept their pictures on this phone. That makes no sense at all. None at all. You know, obviously, besides the photos, we already know that his phone just kept pinging from that area. So, you know, he'd been there several times. Come on so with I the think jokes. the phone is going to be a real treasure trove of information for the investigators, not just from the pictures, not just from, you know, we don't know the texts he sent. We do know, as we talked about a, a few weeks ago, that he had reached out to one of the girls on Instagram. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of tracks there that they can look at and, you know, tracks that I don't think that he covered. There's one line in your exclusive um, where your source says uh, it looked as though Coburg Coburger was certainly, quote, paying attention to her. Were you able to read into that any further? I think paying attention means something more than just, you know, noticing somebody. Paying attention means that you are... Um, you know, purposefully and and very deliberately. They just don't stop. Uh, they just know, don't keeping stop. Keeping track of somebody, keeping track of who they are, what they're doing, that type of thing. So there was somebody who was on his radar for a while, um, and that person, that that girl, was unfortunately one of the victims. You know, all this time we've been trying to figure out the nexus between you know, this uh, alleged killer and these victims, and the only connection that so far can really be made is the fact that um, he's a vegan mm -hmm. and Zana and Maddie both worked at the Mad Greek, which is one of the best vegan, you know, restaurants in that area of both Pullman and Moscow. So from what I've heard from my sources in Pullman, if you're a vegan in Pullman, you have been to the Mad Greek many times. Mm -hmm. It is one of your go to places. Do we know if there's any connection to the two victims who worked? Which is exactly what I said earlier. And if you look, look, man, if if this is all true, that means Maddie's the target. If it's all true. At the Mad Greek, Xana and Maddie and this photograph? Sure. Well, what I would say is that, you know, we reported about a month ago that he had been to the Mad Greek. And then the Mad Greek came out with a statement that basically said, you know, somebody is trying to cash in on 15 minutes of fame. That's a good, that was what the story was. That is what made that people's writer uh, not, because he said Brian Koberger had been there. The Mad Greek came out and said, no, he hadn't been. I forgot about that. That's, that is what made the People Magazine writer um, put him under scrutiny. I think referring to the former employee who had given that information up, you know, um, but they never, ever denied for sure that he was there. They just said somebody is, you know, somebody is trying to cash in on some fame here. So, you know, yeah. I think that we can we can pretty much surmise that, you know, the restaurant 
the phone, all of this type of stuff is something that police have looked into very, very carefully to make sure that they understand kind of the timeline of how did these girls, or at least how did one of these girls get onto Brian Koberger's radar? And he did somehow, or she did somehow, somehow he found her and targeted her allegedly. And so that was really- well, You better you know, say allegedly. looking at right now. And then just one more uh, clarity on your exclusive, and it's pictures plural, right? It's not just one picture. He had pictures plural of at least one victim. Right. Then that could be two. That could be 450. We don't know. We just know it's more than one. You know, you can have a picture of somebody on your phone and not be fixated on that person. That's right. But more than one certainly means that, you know, whether or not he took more than one, you know, I, I'm the worst. When I take pictures of my food, I take four pictures of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it could have been something like that. Or it could be that he downloaded things from her Instagram or screenshotted things from her Instagram. So yeah, that's the other thing, right? Because we don't know if it's downloaded or if they were actually right. snapped on his phone. There's no way to tell between that. Well, at least they're not telling us. They would know. They're not telling us, but but they certainly know, mm -hmm. you know, because every picture you take, it tells you know, you can figure out exactly where a picture was taken, when it was taken, all of that. And people who know a lot more about computers than I do can figure that out. So you better believe that the cops are doing that. Thank you for watching. All right. So that, that's what we got at the moment, at, at this moment. So there's that article. But also, let's take a look at this, because they're saying that Koberger also liked all of Maddie Mogan's pictures. So basically what News Nation is doing right now as they're trying to, they're doing it in a slick way. They're telling you, hey, Koberger had a victim's pictures on his phone. And he liked all Maddie Mogan's Instagram pictures. Wink, wink. That's what they're doing. So basically, what the report really is, is that Brian Koberger had a bunch of Maddie Mogan's pictures on his phone. That's what's being claimed. I, they, all you got to do is put it together. I have some additional reporting uh, to add to this tonight. Uh, new and um, new, unique reporting right. that News Nation has uh, new sources. discovered. And it has to do sources close to the investigation telling us that the person who is... It's always uh, sources close to the investigation. Go ahead. Uh, ...featured on Brian Koberger's phone. The female victim who was featured on Brian Koberger's phone is the same person that he was reaching out to on social media. Uh, and also that the photos were not taken by Brian Koberger. They were downloaded off of that victim's Instagram. So he had taken the pictures from that victim's Instagram. And then I also have this uh, reporting that Brian Koberger followed both Kaylee and Maddie on Instagram. But Koberger liked every one of Maddie's photos. Maddie's on the right. Her best friend Kaylee's on the left. Koberger had liked all of Maddie's photos. Remember the, remember the very first video I ever done? This picture right here that, that you see right here. It was always the picture I had in all my thumbnails and everything because I told you it would be one of them two. Koberger followed, according to them, both of them. And obviously Maddie Mogan is the person they're trying to insinuate as the target compared to liking just a couple of the ones um, on Kaylee's account. He followed both, but he liked all of Maddie's, and compared to liking just a couple of them on um, Kaylee's account. So that may give us a little bit more insight as to potentially who it was that he had downloaded and um, kept on his phone, which victim, which female victim's pictures were on his phone. Okay. Thank you for watching. So, Go to there's that. Crazy world, is it not? Crazy, crazy world. Of course, this thing, this creature from the from the gay lagoon, this person has come under a lot of fire recently. We've talked about this. We've discussed this. A lot of you guys have you believe this thing. I'm not one of those people. I just want to let you know, a lot of people are um, coming to the realization of who this thing is. I want to show you also this. I wanted to show you the likes and dislikes. 631 likes, 788 dislikes. I know a lot of you people can't see the dislikes because YouTube stopped it. But as you can clearly see, and he also shut down comments. He uses to get clout. 
You you understand that he's almost a 2,000 subs, and when he did this video, he had 120. 150. Do you understand? He's at 18,000. So you guys, I just want to let you guys know, to Harsh Reality, to TNT, congratulations. Y'all made him, y'all gave it to him. Y'all gave it to him. And I know that wasn't your intentions. You're doing the same thing I'm doing, so I, I don't want to, you know, and it's not their bad, Right. Because whether it was me roasting them or them, you know, let's just be honest, though. We would have never even known who this clown was unless. So I blame all of us in the YouTube community. I blame every last one of us. Harsh Reality, TNT, me, everyone that spoke about this clown at all. But anyway, so he's now blocking his comments so nobody can call him out. You clearly see most people see things for what they are. I got to give I got to give credit to Truth and Transparency because she came out here and said some some necessary things. Let's go ahead and read her statement. She said, continues to be the best humans we could be, blah, blah, blah. Seeing how much my interview with Justin is being broadcast and spoken about by other YouTube creators, I think it's safe to say that all of you agreed with me, which was the that being the need to address Justin's early morning video. I think we all got, uh, uh, I think we all made a mistake, honestly. I did just that, and I interviewed Justin, period. I will make this perfectly clear. Interviewing someone is the furthest thing from endorsing. My statement speaks for itself below, and it speaks volumes. Justin, produce the proof that you claim against the individuals that you spoke on in any type of way that will be that was labeled by you 100 regardless on if you do that please see the wisdom in taking down your videos that was slanderous or incite hate towards any one person or community you get the libtard shit coming out here right don't 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 insult the trend community yeah, yeah. shut the fuck up so, yeah, you don't want to offend the trans or the blacks. Stop it. All right. Not everything is a goddamn activist action. OK. Nobody fucking nobody sees his videos. If it wasn't for us putting it out there. No community would have been offended by it because nobody would have fucking saw it. Anyway. God damn it. Or a community of people. We do have the right to freedom of speech. That's right. And to have theories and to speak on those. What we don't have the right to do is knowingly put out falsehoods. I agree with that. Well, actually, you do. Don't get me wrong. I don't think you should. But actually, you do have the right to lie. You do. Now, let's continue. Uh, to put out falsehoods against others knowing it interferes with their liberties. Actually, for the most part, you do. Okay? I can say anything I want. And you have to decide. And freedom of speech is that. Now, granted, if it's something that hurts you, you can find me liable. If something hurts, like your money or your reputation. But that's, you got to realize that's a hard thing to prove in court. Plenty of people, six people have sued me over my YouTube videos. You know how many people's won? Zero. Because you can't. I'm just saying, you can't. But I understand. Justin, I accept you as a tranny. Uh, I do not. I applaud you for your attempted service for our country. I applaud your bravery to live a life that empowers your social, physical, and mental well-being. As well as the kind... He's a fucking liar and a fraud. Why are we applauding him? Anyway. And the confidence and happiness it brings to you. But with that said, please do not insult my intelligence or my compassion and grace for just because, Justin, as much as I support the LGBTQ plus LYZQAB community, I also protect it. How do you protect it? What the fuck do you do to protect it? I make YouTube videos and I'm going to protect the lessies and the, and the homos. Get, shut the fuck up. You don't protect. Come on. I protect it, JB. I, I'm standing guard to the to the LGBTQ, ABB, ZZZT community. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry. All right. 
I protect it from people trying to exploit it, as, as I believe you have done with your video on Monday. Okay. Well, good job. Uh, uh, I'm not sure you protected him because he did it and he got all kinds of views. Define protecting it. Right? I protected him by making sure every by bringing awareness to the video, JP. I protected it by making sure everybody heard it. Oh, nice logic. Well, go ahead. <sighs> anyway, so where was I at here? Justin, you being transgender human does not give you the right to speak for people because you deem them the same as you. I agree with that. Like you did with the residents of 1122 King Road. And you did this by labeling them and or categorizing them without so much as a single shred of evidence. It's very, very true. Why? Ask yourself that silently. If you believe this... Hold on. If you believe this house or victims was that of a hate crime then would it would be one thing to uh, I'm sorry that would be one thing and I would implore you to bring that evidence to the authorities I'm sorry about that I got something I had to take care of but that is not what I gathered from the hours of study in the interview that's a good point my agenda will always be the same truth and transparency well this is me being transparent and if possible with Justin and my viewership take down your videos or bring the paper trail so she said she was taking down the interview with him. She talked a little bit about credibility, and I definitely, I definitely agree with her about credibility. No question about that. Hold on, just give me a second. I got to transfer something. Give me just a second. Sorry. Anyways, <clears throat> thank you to Wise Not Owl. Appreciate you. All right, so anyway. So with this said, Justin, can, if he could produce the paper trail, then I think the rest of my case on what I think about Justin's interview and what I think about his sources. Here's the deal. She released information. She's released several, several pics several picks of um, Dylan as a child. For some reason, she looks to have removed the... Oh, there it is. There's Dylan on the high school soccer team. Just completely blowing, what's his name's claims? Completely out of the water. Completely destroying him. Now, Harsh has also came out and spoke. He says, after much deliberation and further seeing more of Justin's sensitive claims, time-sensitive claims coming and going without coming to fruition, um, I have decided that Justin's emails will not be shared unless there are any charges and any of his claims come to light as factual. That's it. He has also stripped. He has also stripped all of his Idaho-related content off his Facebook accounts a short time ago. Remember, his Facebook claimed that his Facebook, Justin's face or her Facebook claimed that Chief of Police James Fry had been arrested for murder by the FBI. All of you people still defending this 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 loony, to, loony broad. I just want you to understand something. You're making yourself look like a fool just because you want Dylan to be trans because you you think that somehow like you think that me saying that she's not trans means I'm defending Dylan. No, I think Dylan is completely wrong on November 13th, but you want her to be trans. You want her to be anything bad because you want to make Dylan the villain. Dylan made herself the villain. She don't need to be a damn tranny to be the villain. She's not a villain, but you want to make... Here's what I see. The only people calling Dylan a tranny is women that you wouldn't want to fuck to begin with. I have yet to see one single hot-ass chick come out here, and, or a dude even, come out here and say, Dylan's a tranny. It's always some chick that clearly is jealous of Dylan. Clearly. But I will say this. I'm going to show you something here. This is kind of crazy. You might be kind of on to something. I'm going to show you something very different. Ashley Flugel. Who's Ashley Flugel? In high school, Koberger also started using heroin with classmate Ashley Flugel. 
Flugel, at age 23, died of an accidental drug overdose. There's a story link here, all of this. Two of the circle die of drugs. Last one, March of 21. So there are people within... Let me tell you something. If this dude was doing heroin with Ashley Flugel, if she was, I want you to see this. She clearly is gay. Clearly she's gay. Now you may say maybe not completely. Well, yeah. Because there's a girlfriend. A little bit late, but a throwback Thursday, one year ago today. I'm so confident in myself thanks to my girlfriend. She makes me feel so good about myself. I love it. I love you, baby. Keep being healthy. I will throw this out there just for you people that are stuck on the whole trans agenda shit. Is it possible, though? That this is one of Koberg's earlier girlfriends did heroin with and maybe is mad because she was gay? I'm not sure, but it does make sense. It does. I'll give you that. But I also got a question to ask you guys about this. Defendants have requested the 911 call made from the house. Oh. What do you guys notice there? Defendants have requested the 911 call. I'm kind of curious what they mean now. Now, they could just mean Koberger and his lawyer. But it seems strange to me. Doesn't, doesn't it seem a little strange to you? By the way, before we get up out of here, I want to update you guys. The woman, the BDSM woman I, that I was into, uh, she got life in prison for the stabbing death of her boyfriend. Actually, someone from her family commented on the video. Um, say shout out to him. Question, did Brian have pics in the phone? Maybe. I got to admit, if he had a whole bunch of pics of Maddie Mogan and then Maddie Mogan... Ended up dead. I have to admit, this looks bad optically for, for Brian Kohlberger. Still isn't evidence. I still don't feel like they've had enough evidence. There's just a lot of bullshit going on with this case, though. There's a lot of people out there, and I can... And listen, I got, I, I, got, I got some videos planned. But what I will say is this. There's a lot of goofiness going on with this case. I just try to commentate on some shit, tell you what I think... Uh, but I, I just want to leave this out. I want to I wanna end with this rant. Joseph Morris had fake audio. Limprister. Okay? We then can move on to... Uh, which one? We, what was the second one? What was the second one? Oh, the Kim lady who was on the Drunken Turkey show. She came out and said that this had something to do with Black Lives Matter. And that... And that you see what I'm saying? She blamed the racial element, Black Lives Matter thing, into this killing, right? And now we got the trans agenda. I want to make a statement to, to some of you guys who, who stay on that side. You're a fucking mental case. It's not, it's not a coincidence that all the bullshit and fraud and weird shit that's going on all seems to come from one side of the tracks. All the made-up, goofy shit. We look at Joseph Morris, obviously sucks dick. We look, at, we look at this case with the Kim thing. I'm not blaming drunk turkeys on that shit because they, they move away from that quick. But clearly, she was a social justice warrior trying to shut down the fraternity and then drop the racial element saying it was about Black Lives Matter and a black dude that had been hung, shit like that. And then we got this case, clearly the trans agenda, clearly all the leftist crime, crime, true crime YouTubers went to her defense, put her out there. I was the only one saying, fuck this. Now they can all come out now and say, hey, we didn't uh, promote it. I was the only one from square one, one that said this goofy bitch is lying. Everyone else played their part and promoted this agenda. I'm just saying, look at those three, the real three goofiest things that's happened in this entire case. It's not a surprise that it comes from one group of people. Because as I say on my political channel, it's a fucking mental disorder. That's the truth. 
I'm not surprised by it. And yeah, I said what I said. And if you got a problem with it, suck my dick. At the end of the day here, you guys and your fucking SJW nonsense, you're victim, victimizing everything. You're crying, you're whining, you're caring. We're victims. We're victims. The, the Idaho case where four, four white kids got killed by other white people. That was about Black Lives Matter, JB. Shut the fuck up. That woman there right there that's hot, she, she's a transsexual, JB, and Ethan was gay. Shut the fuck up. Okay? This is the voice of them screaming inside the house, and I've got the breaking news. I've got the audio. Shut the fuck up. You're mentally ill. But again, that's what it takes to be on your side. Guys, I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time with JB Gunner. If you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, by all means, hit the links down below. You guys are what makes this thing happen. If I offended you, go fuck yourself. Anyways, I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.